lost her mind. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. We're LDS. I have had many communications with Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, and our heavenly parents. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a and a a God and member of the 144,000. She's come. Jesus is coming next year. The urgent search for those missing Idaho siblings. Officials say the kids have not been seen since September. Cops are looking high and low, but they can't find them anywhere. And yet... I know where they are now and what they're doing. I know how wonderful heaven is. Mother threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened to murder you? Yes. And she said, How did she do that? My, my bishop right there is in the car. He was on the phone with me today when she said, I will have you destroyed. She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. Okay. This became the most famous missing persons case in the country. Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallo disappeared in September of 2019. Can you tell me where your kids are? There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. A man who predicted his demise, fatally in his wife's home. A woman who believed she was to live forever. Chandler Police Department, anybody inside, make yourself known! The eternal being, Lori Vallow, a woman who lived 21 lifetimes and had seven marriages. In reality, a soccer mom turned cult priestess, who ultimately sacrificed her flesh and blood at the altar. When one pictures an all-American soccer mom, one would probably see someone like Lori Vallow. The Idaho mother of two opened her heart and her home to her husband's family, treating his nephew as his own. She was deeply religious and a great mother overall. So great, in fact, that she saved her husband's adopted son and her daughter from his inappropriate advances, divorcing him and taking sole custody of the children. Eventually, she would marry someone worthy of being their father. Unfortunately, she would lose everyone, her husbands, her children, and her wonderful life. Tragic as it was, Lori survived. Shockingly, this entire persona was tarnished in February 2020 after a series of mysterious events that accused this loving, doting mother of being a monster mom. Turns out, she openly embraced this life. Within a year, she was referred to as an eternal being, married seven different times out of 21 lives, and her leader convinced her to prepare for the apocalypse. But here's the catch, she would have to prove her loyalty to God to find peace. She was the chosen one who had to carry out these acts of God, communicated to her by the preacher who would turn into her lover. What exactly was this soccer mom willing to sacrifice to be with this mind-controlling preacher? To understand how it got here, we must first talk about who Lori Vallow was. Lori Noreen Cox, born June 26, 1973 in Loma Linda, California, seemed to live a life marked by ordinary milestones, but it would soon spiral into something far more sinister and disturbing. Originally born and raised in a typical Mormon household, Lori's early life followed a predictable path. She was a cheerleader in high school. In 1992, 19-year-old Lori married her high school sweetheart, but the marriage ended in divorce shortly after. She tried again in 1995, marrying William Lagoya, and had her first child, Colby, in 1996. However, the relationship crumbled, leading to their divorce in 1998. In 2001, she married Joseph Anthony Ryan Jr., who also adopted Colby. Lori worked as a hairdresser for a time and later took part in the Mrs. Texas beauty pageant in 2004, suggesting a life of appearances and reinvention. During this marriage, she made several TV appearances, including as a contestant in the Mrs. Texas beauty pageant. It took Lori a long time to get in shape for the pageant. It was just something for her to do in her spare time. In a chilling, foreboding statement, she added something that wouldn't age well. Being a good mom is very important to me, and a good wife, and a good worker, and being all those things together is not easy, so I'm basically a ticking time bomb. <laughs> 
This is also when she appeared on the game show Wheel of Fortune in a 2004 episode. It's during this time Lori makes an appearance on the game show Wheel of Fortune. Gopher, Doc, Isaac, and Captain Stubing. Yeah! With Joseph Anthony Ryan, she gave birth to a daughter, Tylee, the same year. Little Tylee loved to get her hair done by her mother but Tylee had severe attacks of pancreatitis. She would end up in the hospital for days on end, unable to eat or drink. Lori would starve with her daughter and not eat in front of her, feeling one with her pain, in solidarity with her baby's suffering. Her husband was not around as their marriage ended in 2005 with a divorce. It got worse. Lori claimed she was protecting Tylee from her abusive father, as he was incredibly physically abusive. While hailed as a survivor of domestic abuse, nobody realized that a pattern was emerging. Her early divorces, brief career choices, and seeming search for identity were just the beginning of a journey that would eventually descend into tragedy. Lori claimed Ryan was abusive, resulting in a fight between her brother, Alex Cox, and Ryan. Investigations would later reveal a deeply disturbing relationship between Alex and Lori. Alex Cox's ex-wife shared unsettling details about his relationship with his sister, Lori Vallow, which contributed to the breakdown of their marriage. They had a brief marriage in 1992, ending in divorce in 1993. Early in the marriage, she noticed inappropriate dynamics within Alex's family, particularly between Alex and Lori. His ex-wife described disturbing behaviors such as touching and simulated acts between the siblings, which were done openly and without shame in front of others. Alex was described as an overly protective brother, even to the point of calling Lori hot and expressing a desire to confront any men Lori dated or married. This behavior, combined with Alex's nonchalant attitude towards inappropriate touching within his family, made his ex-wife uncomfortable and contributed to her decision to leave him. She confronted Alex about the behavior, questioning what would happen if they had children and how he would treat them. But Alex dismissed her concerns, insisting it was normal within his family. The ex-wife's discomfort highlights the unhealthy family dynamics and boundaries, particularly between Alex and Lori, which continued to raise red flags throughout their relationship. Alex's overprotectiveness, coupled with his apparent attitude towards his sister, created an environment that felt toxic and inappropriate to his ex-wife, ultimately leading her to end the marriage. For Lori, the long string of marriages finally led to Las Vegas, Nevada, where she married Leland Anthony Vallow, better known as Charles. The couple had a blended marriage with Charles's two sons and Lori's daughter, Tylee. Tylee adored her new family. You need someone to cuddle with, but you don't have a significant other? Worry no more. She has tough exterior, but she's got a marshmallow heart. Theirs was a happy family, as this was finally a happily ever after for Lori. She took a big step with her husband, committing to the relationship forevermore. In 2013, the Vallows adopted Charles's grandnephew, Joshua Jackson, or J.J. Vallow for short. J.J. was on the autism spectrum, and who better to mother him than Lori? She was calm, patient, and loving, even toward his special needs. Kylie took on the role of a big sister and treated him as her flesh and blood. They were always laughing and smiling. Lori's brother, Alex Cox, didn't just approve of Charles. The two became instant best friends. They got very close. Lori's other brother, Adam Cox, grew incredibly close with Charles. They would often go on trips together. The Vallows moved to Hawaii for four years before setting up home in Arizona in 2017. Charles Vallow was financially successful and enjoyed a luxurious lifestyle as a managing partner at a financial investment firm. He made $20,000 a month, which he spent on high-end cars, expensive trips, and large houses. Money was a priority for him, and he liked to display his wealth in a very showy way. While Lori Vallow enjoyed the material benefits, those aspects weren't as important to her as the idea of having a happy family. Charles seemed more focused on wealth and status, while Lori valued family life more, though her later actions suggest her priorities eventually shifted. 
But a dark cloud came over the Happy family in 2017, after their move to Arizona. Lori was an avid reader, and she took a liking to a sci-fi author who mostly wrote about post-apocalyptic or pre-apocalyptic dystopia. His name was Chad Daybell. While Chad Daybell's books were mostly fiction, he believed he was narrating true events that would take place in the future. Additionally, Charles Vallow noticed Laurie was getting a little obsessive about experiences where people went to the other side, came back, and shared their spiritual experiences. She was a former devoted member of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. She was so devout she made Charles switch to the Latter-day Saints Church. But things got strange very quickly. Her religious beliefs appeared changed. He felt her drifting away day by day. After a year or so of being a fangirl, Lori met Chad Daybell in 2018. From the very first meeting, it was as if there was a connection. They began talking more and more, even hosting religious podcasts together, which might sound like the rants of a conspiracy theorist, but they took it seriously. Chad Daybell wasn't a homewrecker. He was happily married to Tammy Daybell and raised five children together. But friends and family became concerned. Lori's best friend, Melanie Gibb, overheard the two discussing zombies, souls that were replaced by dark spirits. Once while Charles was away, Lori held a religious gathering overnight at her house. She invited her friends from this religious group along with Chad Daybell. And from then on, it was quite evident. Something was going on between Lori and Chad. They spent most of their time talking to each other and sharing religious beliefs and theories. As Lori discussed some of the details at home, her family was worried. Her sister, Summer Shiflet, was very surprised. A perfectly normal Lori was spiraling into a very dangerous cult. I didn't, I knew something was off from the beginning, but I didn't know what, and I, I had never seen anybody with um, a delusional disorder before, um, but she wasn't talking like this then. There were some religious things, and but she was cherry picking what she shared with each member of the family. So it took us a long time to come together and like all talk about what we knew and what she had told each one of us. And we all got different versions. So it wasn't ever like a consistent, like everyone got the same exact information. The more Lori revealed to them, the more they were shocked at what she had gotten herself into. They strongly believed she had joined a cult, but they couldn't imagine what would follow next. Faithful, loving, sweet Lori would be erased and replaced by someone they didn't even know. On the 31st of January 2019, Charles went to the police for intervention. Long story. She's had kind of a drug for me, Miami. Mm -hmm. She thinks she's. You LDS? Yes. She thinks she's married to Morona in the past. This is her you age. think she's what? She's married to Morona at the top of the temple. Angel. Angel, Angel LDS. But it's gotten really, really bad lately. She's had a break. She says, I'm Nick Schneider. I've taken over Charles' body. Lori was having severe delusions. She believed that someone else was inhabiting Charles' body. She was actively threatening Charles. And Charles has been killed. I'm going to kill you. You're going to be murdered today or tomorrow. I can, have, I can do it. I'm not going to my priest with my power. She's got, she does priesthood blessings. She does... Um, Charles was hopeless and wanted his children back. He was driven to tears. I've got a six-year-old with special needs. Right. And he stays <laughs> yes. at school somewhere. Right. Okay. He was concerned about himself and the safety of his children after realizing her mental state was deteriorating. When I first realized that she was going down a weird path is when I was sitting in, standing in her kitchen with her and her telling me that she was becoming an immortal being. At one point, Lori told him she believed she was a divine deity tasked with carrying out the responsibilities of the 144,000 during Christ's anticipated second coming in July 2020. As per that belief, she was in an eternal marriage with Prophet Moroni from the ancient Book of Mormon and claimed she had lived multiple lives on various planets before her present existence. Lori threatened Charles with taking his life if he ever got in her way. She was obsessed with preparing for the end of days. As for Summer, the only experience she shared was that she came close to heaven when she gave birth to Tylee. She left her body and saw their sister Stacy. Summer believed it was either in her head or a spiritual experience. Either way, it seemed harmless at the time. 
Charles Vallow grew increasingly concerned about Lori's extreme religious beliefs, fearing they could lead to serious problems. During one of his business trips, Lori went as far as canceling his return flight without warning. When Charles finally made his way home, he was stunned to discover that Lori had disappeared with the children, taken his truck, and withdrawn $35,000 in cash. That's what she, she made. took my car and my okay. she, I suspect she took my car and my keys. I have no keys to get in. Oh, okay. No garage door opener. Okay. She knows what she's doing. She took $35,000 out of our bank account today. I can't make payroll Friday for my company. Charles hoped the police would listen to him and understand the extent of her psychosis. She took all the money out of her bank account today. What did money. she say yesterday? She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. He even called the police to intervene at Lori's hotel. He wanted his children back, but he didn't want to cause any trouble. And he was genuinely concerned for his wife, or who she was becoming now. I'm not irrational or stupid or anything. I didn't that impression wanted, at all. I wanted to get out. Yeah. Her religious stuff is gone way off the deep end. Okay. Just way off. Yeah. He then said something haunting. She needs some serious help. Uh, I want her to get help. I'm worried about her. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think we'll survive this, but she needs help. Charles tragically foretold that he might not survive the entire ordeal. He didn't know just how right he was. According to Lori's nephew, Zach Cox, Lori was bad-mouthing Charles to the entire family and acting odd. Charles was alienated from everyone, including his best friend Adam, Lori's brother. Lori had told me that Charles was dead and there was a zombie living in him and she was really manipulative about some things before that. So the entire family's cutting Charles off. She sends this text, me and Charles are in a big fight. Um, if he calls you, don't answer. So everyone in my family listened to that and instantly sided with Lori because Lori was saying that he was having an affair. A friend, April Raymond, heard Chad ranking spirits. He ranked everyone with numbers, twos and threes. We're supposed to change sides from dark to light or vice versa, whereas anyone 4.1 and above was considered as rarely switching sides. She also overheard Lori referring to her husband as a demon. This wasn't a joke. Lori completely believed it to be true. Emails that were later recovered from Lori's account would reveal that Chad Daybell had told Lori that her third husband, Tylee's father, Joseph Ryan Spirit, was a 4.3D. Tylee was 4.1D, JJ was 4.2L, and that her estranged husband, Charles, was 3L, and her brother, Alex Cox, a 2L. D was dark and L was light in this context, so Lori's entire family was doomed, so to speak. The Vallow's divorce attorney was surprised when Charles came to him with a disturbing request. Lori told him that she was going to have him killed, that he was in the way, and that she had an angel that would dispose of his body after that took place. Charles wanted to ensure the attorney told everyone that if he ever went missing, it was all Lori's fault. Nobody paid attention to the desperate man. Nobody could have foreseen the horrors that unfolded. Nearly five months after their separation in July 2019, tragedy struck. I'm in police in an ambulance. What's the emergency there? Uh, there was a, I got in a fight with my brother-in-law and I am in self-defense. Uh, I shot my brother-in-law. While separated but co-parenting, Charles Vallow arrived at Lori's house in Chandler, Arizona to pick up their son, JJ, for school. There, he encountered Lori's brother, Alex Cox, and a heated argument erupted, reportedly about Lori. According to Alex, Charles tried to attack him, prompting Alex to shoot Charles in what he claimed was self-defense. Both Lori and her daughter Tylee backed Alex's account, stating it was a case of self-defense. As a result, Alex was not charged with homicide. Lori and Tylee were later interviewed separately, but their stories matched. On the scene, Lori seemed undisturbed. Let me get your information. Does your husband live here? No. Lori was acting suspiciously cheery for someone whose husband had just been shot. How long have you lived here? Like three weeks. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. That's why the neighbor's so awesome. Gotcha. <laughs> like, hi, neighbor, sorry. Are you working at all? Uh, no. Okay. 
The officer questioned Tylee next. Hello, young lady. Hey, let me just get your information. How old are you? 16. 16? Okay. And that's mom? The police took her for interrogation, and she corroborated with her brother's story, adding to the drama. I was very worried about whatever was on his text mm -hmm. that he did not want me to see, and so I was just holding it there, and he was screaming at me. However, Tylee also gave the same account and was a more credible witness to the officers. She showed genuine grief and concern. In hindsight, I probably just shouldn't have brought it out at all because it caused more trouble. But it was kind of just first instincts, and it was right by my bed. Oddities. There are a few at this scene. You have some idea on you, sir? Yeah. Alex Cox is supposedly performing CPR on a guy that has two bullet holes in his chest. He shoved me and spun me around. Okay. And then... Cracked yeah. me in the back of the head. Cracked you in the back of the head. Yeah. Cox is describing what he said led him to... Charles Vallow, his brother-in-law. What happened when you came out with the gun? I said, put that bat down. He goes, what are you going to do it like that? And he came at me. It was suspicious, to say the least. But how could Alex escape with a scratch on the back of his head if Charles truly was swinging a bat around as described? Hey, team, we got one subject down. A parent gunshot wounds in the chest. But after walking through the scene and comparing it to Cox's description, investigators became suspicious. Furthermore, Lori revealed that Charles was being abusive and threatening. And then he hasn't been back. But it's all these threats on my phone all the time, you know, like whatever, all these things. And then he told me... What kind of threats? Just... You'd have to read them to me, but he's always mad at me, right? Okay. And he doesn't want a divorce, but I don't like him and don't want to deal with him, so that's just how it is. So. Yeah. She even tried to make him sound like the bad guy who was ripping her family apart. He says, come and get Judy, and Judy's like, I don't want dad, because he knows dad took him away, so he was freaking out, all right? He came over in the morning, and he's like banging on the door, I'm like, oh great, here we go, you know? And I was just gonna be nice, I'm just gonna be nice as possible, and I had Judy's stuff all ready for school. And the fact that she can laugh and smile while describing the events that lead to the homicide sort of explains the kind of psychopath she had become. Take him to Burger King because that's what he likes for breakfast. Yeah. He's very particular about food. Yeah. He wanted chicken fries for yeah. breakfast and the Sprite. Like, <laughs> and I just can't believe that because if you don't know what he wants in, it's like on the floor screaming, dragging him into school. Like. Yeah. But Lori's story was supported by a video from Walgreens and Burger King where she stopped to get food for JJ. Can't see that person clearly enough to say what who that person is. And were you aware that Lori indicated she'd left the residence with both of her children? That's right. This would be the video that I recovered from that Walgreens, showing that at 816 on their timestamp, Ms. Lori Vallow walks in. And there's the register view of her buying the sandals as claimed. It also showed her shopping for sandals, as she said in her interrogation. The following September, Lori moved to Rexburg, Idaho, with Alex living in the same building. The last known photograph of Lori, Tylee, JJ, and Alex Cox was taken on September 8, 2019, during a visit to Yellowstone National Park. After that day, Tylee was never seen again. Eerily, the next morning, Alex's GPS placed him in Chad Daybell's backyard for two hours. Just 14 minutes after Alex left, Chad sent his wife a strange message, claiming he had shot and buried a raccoon in their pet cemetery. An oddly timed coincidence. Then, on September 22nd, while Lori's friend Melanie and her boyfriend David were staying at Lori's house, they witnessed Alex carrying JJ into a bedroom. When David stopped them, because he wanted to say hello to JJ, Lori coldly told him that J.J. was a zombie and that Alex had to take him away. J.J. was never seen again after that night. Melanie was freaked out and stopped talking to Lori. The next day, Alex's GPS showed him in Daybell's backyard for 17 minutes. A strange coincidence. Things seemed quiet for a while then, but that wasn't the end of the mysterious circumstances. In February 2019, Chad shared a chilling vision with his neighbors, Todd and Alice Gilbert. He foresaw that his wife Tammy would die before her 50th birthday. Then, on October 9, 2019, the eerie prediction seemed to inch closer to reality. Tammy was startled in her driveway by a masked man who aimed what she thought was a paintball gun at her. 
The man pulled the trigger several times, but no shots fired. Shaken but unharmed, Tammy reported the bizarre encounter to the police, who brushed it off as a prank. Yet the man's identity remained a mystery, leaving an unsettling shadow over what was dismissed as a harmless joke. On the 19th of October, Chad and his son called 911 to report that his wife Tammy had passed away in her bed. Their mother was ill, so the children declined an autopsy. Chad also said she wasn't feeling well and had a cough. Despite all the chaos and tragedy, Lori and Daybell seemed to move on with life, albeit a little too soon. Two weeks after Tammy Daybell's demise, Chad and Lori got married on a Hawaiian beach. When JJ's grandmother, Kay Woodcock, realized Lori was in Hawaii, she contacted authorities about not being able to reach JJ. Upon being contacted by the police, Lori claimed JJ was with her friend Melanie Gibb. Melanie Gibb obviously denied it. Chad, Lori, can you tell me where your kids are? Would you tell me what happened to JJ? Can you tell me where Tylee is? Just to see her utter disregard. Someone called a wellness check for JJ because Lori was not allowing her family members to meet him. And what did he ask you? He was just saying that he wanted to do a well check on JJ. So JJ would be where? He's in Arizona. <laughs> Who's he with in Arizona? He's with one of my friends in Arizona. In fact, she had some dramatic information for the police. It is very weird. I've had to move around a lot. One of my brothers is trying to kill me. Not the brother that lives here, obviously. He's kind of my protector. My other brother was in with my husband who was trying to kill me for my $2 million life insurance policy. My husband and I, who died earlier this year. Okay. He passed away. Since he Sorry. passed away, she's been trying to fight me for him and being really horrible to me and that kind of stuff. So apparently, everyone was out to get Lori. She felt threatened by her brother and JJ's grandmother, was conspiring to get custody of him. But there was more. My husband, who we were married for 15 years and had raised all these five kids together, switched his life insurance policy to her, right? To, <laughs> to his sister, okay. who got a million dollars when he died. And we got nothing for me to raise JJ and all the kids got nothing and everybody got nothing. She got a million dollars. As per Lori's account, JJ's grandmother got a million dollars because Charles Vallow changed his insurance policy. She did not elaborate as to why he changed it. We've only been here since September. Okay. We moved up here in September. My daughter goes to BYUI. Your daughter goes to BYUI? Yeah. Does she live here? Mm -hmm. When Rexburg police tried to find little JJ, detectives had another shocking revelation. Tylee Ryan was also missing. She had been missing since after their Yellowstone trip on September 8th, 2019. But Lori was claiming that Tylee was fine. I mean, I canceled the insurance policy since my husband passed, so there's no money. Thank you. <laughs> what are they going to do with JJ and Tylee? Like, what do people think? Yeah. Notice she mentions the life insurance policy again. Her loved ones were distraught. This sparked a nationwide search for the two missing children. During the ongoing search, Lori and Daybell quietly returned to Hawaii in December, fueling investigators' growing suspicions. Chad, where are Lori's kids? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. Meanwhile, the mysterious circumstances of Tammy Daybell's demise prompted authorities to exhume her body. The autopsy confirmed a chilling discovery. She had been strangled. During the same month, Lori's brother Alex Cox passed away in Arizona, and it was determined to be due to natural causes. His blood pressure shot up, causing heart complications. On January 25, 2020, authorities served Lori Vallow Daybell with an order to produce her children. A month later, after failing to do so, she was arrested and sent back to Idaho. She was worried about how she would look during the court proceedings, so Cook gave her some lotion, deodorant, and makeup she had purchased from the commissary. In March 2020, Lori Vallow Daybell was incarcerated in Madison County Jail, Idaho, and during her time there, she shared a jail pod with a woman referred to as Melissa Cook, pseudonym for safety reasons. 
Cook spent a few days in the same pod with Lori from March 5th to 8th and provided insights into Lori's behavior and mindset. Cook noted that Lori was always upbeat and friendly and showed no signs of heartbreak or emotional distress, despite her children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, having been missing since September 2019. Lori was glad that she was no longer being incarcerated in Hawaii, where she complained about the poor conditions, such as roaches in the facility. Lori was concerned about her appearance ahead of her initial court appearance in Rexburg. She complained about having dry skin and was worried about how she would look on camera. Cook helped Lori by giving her lotion, deodorant, and makeup from the jail commissary. Lori was excited about the attention her court appearance would receive, asking Cook to watch the news and see how the media portrayed her. She seemed to enjoy the publicity, saying things like, Here it comes. Let's see what they say about me now. During their time together, Lori was frequently meeting with her attorneys. When Cook asked if Lori would be able to post the $1 million bail, Lori responded by gesturing down her body and saying, We'll see if all of this is worth a million dollars, seemingly referring to herself. Lori also spent time talking to her son, Colby, and her husband, Chad Daybell. Cook described Lori's calls with Chad as nauseating, noting Lori's need for attention, affection, and constant reassurance of Chad's love. Lori always made sure to look good whenever she communicated with him. In her conversations with Colby, Lori told him to read the book of Job, comparing her own experiences to the biblical story, implying that she was being tested by God. She emphasized that people should not judge her and that only God had the right to judge. Lori told Colby to stay off social media, repeating the advice from her prophet to avoid online scrutiny. Though Cook avoided discussing Lori's missing children directly, she believed at the time that Lori and Chad had taken them to a polygamy compound while they were planning a new life in Hawaii. After four days, Cook was moved out of the pod, and Lori was placed in isolation. When Cook was later released from jail, she texted Lori, who responded warmly, saying, I've been praying for you. I'd love to visit with you. However, the meeting between the two never took place. Cook recounted how Lori frequently said, Everything has a purpose. God has a plan for everyone. His plan will be accomplished, reflecting Lori's belief that everything happening was part of a divine plan. In June, the couple's failure to cooperate led to FBI, Rexburg Police, and the Fremont County Sheriff's Office to search Chad Daybell's property. Thanks to Alex Cox's cell phone pings, police dug in the right spots. In a shocking turn of events, the pet cemetery wasn't animal remains after all, but shallowly buried human remains. Little J.J. Vallow was recovered from under a tree. His body was discovered with a plastic bag tightly secured over his head, bound so firmly that there were clear signs of a struggle. There was no plausible explanation for how he ended up this way. The cause of his demise was determined to be asphyxiation, the result of the plastic bag over his head and duct tape covering his mouth. Although the precise method of his passing remains unspecified, the forensic pathologist emphasized that the importance of examining the totality of the case, including the surrounding circumstances. Tragically, the charred bits and pieces of Tylee were in the pet cemetery, in the same spot Chad Daybell had told his wife he had buried a raccoon. As the remains were identified, Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow were facing first-degree homicide for taking the lives of the two children. Furthermore, Chad Daybell was also accused of sinister motives towards his wife Tammy Daybell, given the circumstances, possibly that he took her life. Chad and Lori spoke to each other on the 8th of June, 2020, revealing their psychosis. They're doing all they can to destroy one of the key families, but they're not going to. They began discussing a blueprint of a project that might sound like home renovation, but it quickly became apparent that this project was code for something else. But there's other things in the project where um, when I'm going back over it, right, that I could have easily done or been inspired to do to avoid a lot of the issues that are going to come up with that. A year later, in June 2021, Chad Daybell pleaded not guilty, while Lori's case was delayed due to her undergoing psychiatric treatment. 
A revealing phone call between Lori and her sister highlighted Lori's detachment from reality, with her sister desperately pleading for the truth. During Lori's trial, key testimony came from her friend Melanie Gibb, her son Colby Ryan, and her sisters. Lori completely believed her delusion, as was evident in her trial. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. No one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. So Lori truly believed she had met Jesus Christ and then came back on earth to do the Lord's bidding. How I would help my children and others in the future. So ultimately, I did agree to go back to my body. Her entire speech turns into an insane rant. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Kylie is free now from all the pains of her life. And I am the only person on this earth who knows how much Kylie suffered in her life. She had pain every single day. But the way Lori breaks down talking about JJ reveals that she truly believes in her delusions. JJ, JJ, Joshua Jackson, was an adult spirit. And he was very, very tall when he put his arm around me. My eternal friend, Tammy Daybell, has visited me on several occasions. She came to bring me peace and comfort. And I know that she is extremely busy helping her family, especially her children and grandchildren. She finally concluded her monologue nine minutes later. In May 2023, an utterly emotionless Lori was found guilty. She was later sentenced to life in prison without parole. The 51-year-old is currently behind bars, whereas Chad Daybell received capital punishment and is currently awaiting his turn. The chilling tale of a mother's descent into darkness ends not with an explanation, but with the haunting echoes of lives lost. Lori Vallow, once seen as a nurturing mother and devoted wife, became a figure whose tragic choices spiraled into horror. In her quest for eternal life with her lover, Chad Daybell, she sacrificed the very children she once vowed to protect. Fueled by twisted beliefs and manipulated by a man who claimed divine insight, she lost not only her family, but her humanity. As we reflect on this tragic story, it forces us to ask, how far can someone go when faith turns into fanaticism and love becomes a tool for control? For Lori, it wasn't just her victims who paid the ultimate price. It was the soul of a mother who sacrificed everything at the altar of a delusion.